Hello ladies and germs, this is Paul and we are into week 6 of Introduction to Interactive Python Programming. In this week we talked about the big subject, object oriented programming and we also work with something called tile images. So as you remember this is a single big image with 52 cards and when we want to show a single card we tell the computer to show a specific part in this big image corresponding to that one card. So in this tutorial, I'd like to talk more about tiled images. In the lectures, we've seen how we can specify the card in the i-th column and j-th row. I think it might be a good idea to find a different tiled image and see if we can write a program that applies the same ideas. But before we get into that, let me take a slight detour and talk about how I understand the idea of tiled images. So when tiled images were introduced this week, I thought it looked familiar. So I remember that a few years ago I started a WordPress blog and I was particularly interested at the time how to make the website run faster, load quicker and I came across something called the uh, CSS Sprite. So this is W3School's introduction to CSS image sprites. So what it is is a one image like this that contains six little images and you can selectively show parts of it and when I hover it, then shows another darkened version of it. It turns out these things are all over the place. Like these images are dug out from my blog and you can see there are just a bunch of little images. And if you go to some of your favorite websites and if you know where to look, you will find something like this. I bet nobody can guess where this came from. So what's the point? Say you're working on a home improvement project and you go to your neighbor and say, Hey dude, I'm working on a project. May I borrow a, a hammer? And he says, Sure, I got a hammer. There you go. Thank you very much. And you use the hammer. And then you come back and say, Hey, I, I also need a, a screwdriver. Do you have a screwdriver? Your neighbor says, Sure, I have a screwdriver. There you go. Thank you very much. You use the screwdriver. And then you come back and say, hey, I also need a plier. See how inefficient that is? So the next time you come to the neighbor and say, I'm, I'm working on a project, may I borrow some tools? Your neighbor says, there you go. Everything's in here. Take whatever you need. So the idea is that for a given website, it's easier for your browser to ask the server for one big image file and selectively show parts of that image rather than asking 10 times for 10 tiny image files. Back to the main program. So in my quest to find an image file that we can use, like the poker cards, I settled on this one. Don't laugh. Pokemon! Gotta catch them all! <clears throat> so why don't we just do something simple like a screensaver type program where we have a bunch of Pokemon just hopping around the screen. So let's first look at the image first, right? There are 31 Pokemon in each row and there are 21 rows. And the dimension of the image is 2976 across and 2016 vertical. So if we uh, divide 2976 by 31, that is 96 and vertically also we get 96 so very conveniently each image is a square of 96 pixels by 96 pixels so now I have the basic program set up I import the packages define where to load the image set up the dimension of the canvas there's an empty draw handler and there's the frame setup and here's my plan of attack I'm gonna start by making a bare bone program, which I already did, and then I'll define a Pokemon class. In the Pokemon class, I want to have a draw method that draws the Pokemon, and that's gonna be the main objective of the day. How do I go from just the ID of the Pokemon to the exact draw position of the image? Finally, I'll add some extra features if I feel like it. By the way, apologies to any real Pokemon fans because I actually know just about nothing about Pokemon. Alright, so let's see if I've accomplished my first objective. I'm just gonna run this empty program. Looks fine. So I'm gonna start working on the Pokemon class. Here's the initializer method and the stir method. 
I don't want to go too long without testing that I have everything correct, so time to test. I'm going to create my first Pokemon and just try printing it. So far so good. Now I want to add a position to the Pokemon and also a random ID. The total number of Pokemons is the number of rows times the number of columns minus the two missing at the corner. I'm going to have a string method to print out the ID. Oops, I have modified how I call the class. I'm going to make it a variable. Normally, I'll test things more thoroughly before I'm satisfied, but I've done this before and I know it works, so it's time to move on to the draw method. So, in the draw method, I want to draw the image of my Pokemon. So, the arguments for draw image are the image, center on the source image, which is the main question, I'll come back to fix this later, width and height of the source image, which we know that is 96 by 96, the center of the destination on the canvas, which will be in this case the position of my Pokemon, and the size is also 96 by 96. Then where is our Pokemon, say number 233 or whatever, where is it on the image? Well, I think the question to ask first is, which row and which column is it on? If we have that, we can probably figure out where on the image it is. Okay, so here's a grid of Pokemons, and this is uh, column 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to column 30, and row 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Also, my Pokemons are labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to the next row. It will start from 31 because I have um, rows of 31, 32, 33, and so on. The next row is going to start from 62. You see this uh, 31 apart, so 63, 64 and so on. So how does each index number relate to its row and column number? Well, let's first notice that the first row all have an index number that's smaller than 31. Remember that 31 is the number of Pokemons in each row. So I'm going to write that as 0 plus something that's small. Small meaning smaller than 31. What about the second row? The second row starts from 31, and I think you can convince yourself that it will be 31 plus, oops, plus something that's small. Small meaning smaller than 31, or I can say it's 1 times 31 plus something that's smaller than 31. And then the second row, it's going to be 2 times 31, which is 62 plus something smaller than 31. Third row, 3 times 31 plus something smaller than 31. Oops, excuse me, I just realized I should have said row 0, row 1, etc. Gosh, the counting system. But anyways, so let's take uh, 95 for example. 95 um, is, is 3 times 31 is in the row 3 and then plus 2. Why well, isn't that interesting? Because if you want to get to number 95, you first have to cross 3 complete rows and then you will have 2 left over. So 3 correspond to the row that you end up with and then 2 is just the column. And if we rewrite it as a division, that would be 95 divided by 31 is what? It's 3. And then remainder, 2. So just by dividing by 31 gives us the row number and the column number. And finally, how do you get from 95 to 3? And how do you get from 95 to 2 in code? That's simple. You just do 95, an integer division by 31, and that would give you 3. And if you do 95 modulo 31, that gives you the remainder, and that would be 2. If you don't remember, say, how the modulo works, I believe there are some very good tutorials that's been made on those, so check them out. Great, so we've solved that piece of the puzzle. 
To find the row our Pokemon is on, we take the ID and do an integer division or floor division by 31. For the column, we use the ID modulo 31. So now trying to find the position in the image should be a lot more straightforward. Again, we have our columns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and rows 0, 1, 2. Now, do we know the center coordinate of the very first image? Of course, because we know that this is 96 by 96. So to reach that center, we will have to go from the top corner, go 48 to the right, and then 48 down. Now, how do we get to the center of the image on row 1 and column 2, which is right here? Well, we first have to go horizontally this far. How far is this far? This is 96, and then another 96, and then 48. And then how far do we go down? Well, that's going to be 96, and that's 48. So, in the x-coordinate, I've gone 2 times 96 plus half the length, which is 48. And then in the y-direction, I've gone 1 times 96 plus half the length. So there I have found the relationship between the center coordinate and the row number and column number. The x-coordinate is going to be the column number multiplied by the width of one image plus the, the width of half of an image. Similarly, the y-coordinate is going to be my row number times the height of one image plus half the height of one image. Now let's transfer all that into code. The center of my image is going to be 96 times the column number plus half the width 48 and 96 times the row number plus half the height 48. Okay, I hope this works. Well, I know it works. Let's call the draw method in the draw handler. Bingo! Ooh, I like this one. Alright, so I'm not gonna bore you with the bells and whistles parts of the coding. I'm out of time. But anyways, I just took what we constructed and took it a little further. And let's see what the result looks like. There it is, it's a uh, Pokemon Fireworks. You can click on the screen and Pokemon will be erupting from that spot. I don't know, I think it's funny. So I hope that was helpful in some way. Gotta catch them all. Happy coding!